The US recently announced the next generation of Abrams tank. How would it fare in an out-and-out -out tank duel with Russia's best? A remote 30mm chain gun, 360-degree panoramic daytime, thermal and laser targeting, smaller crew, modular upgradability, next-generation digital sensors, AI and drone pairing capabilities, parallel diesel and electric power modes, a lethal main gun. Welcome to the Abrams X. After decades of incremental improvements, the 40-year-old battle-proven M1A2 Abrams main battle tank MBT is finally set to receive a comprehensive next-generation overhaul. Last October, General Dynamics Land Systems previewed its concept for the Abrams X. In a demonstration featuring a full-scale mock-up laced with futuristic upgrades and design improvements, the new Abrams X offered a glimpse into the future of tank technology. In today's video, we'll see what the newly designed Abrams X improves upon and how it might fare in an out-and-out -out tank duel against Russia's best offering, the T-14 Armata. American tank technology did not change much during the Cold War. After World War II, the American military relied heavily on its first-generation main battle tanks, the M48 Patton and its successor, the M60. Both saw heavy service either in NATO or Vietnam. However, by the 1970s, progressive Soviet tank improvements had prompted Western militaries to revisit their decades-old tank design. In the 1960s, the US and West Germany began collaborating on a replacement main battle tank expressly designed to defeat the Soviet T-62. By 1970, their joint project, the MBT-70, had incorporated the latest weapon, engine, and suspension technologies, but the resulting platform was far too heavy and expensive to produce as a whole. The project was eventually scrapped, prompting the US Army to reallocate its remaining funding to develop a viable alternative. This they did. Throughout the 1970s, Chrysler Defense won its competition with General Motors for its M1 prototype, a design that was soon awarded a $20 billion development contract from the Department of Defense. In 1979, the M1 Abrams began rolling off production lines, a revolutionary design with sleek armor, improved targeting, and better cross-country travel capabilities than anything else in its class. General Dynamics purchased Chrysler Defense in the mid-1970s and has continued production of the M1 Abrams to the present day. Costing well over $6 million per unit, over the span of 40 years, General Dynamics has produced more than 10,000 Abrams tanks. Remaining in service for decades after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the Abrams racked up an impressive combat record in the Persian Gulf War and subsequent wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Admittedly, since the Abrams has never engaged in a tank duel with a vehicle of similar specifications, it's hard to know how it might perform in a fair fight. During the 1991 Gulf War, American M1s destroyed 37 Soviet T-72s, the best enemy tank at the time, while sustaining zero casualties. It had a comparable, though slightly less, lopsided service record in Iraq. Throughout these conflicts, the Abrams played to its primary strengths, especially its impressive firing range and durability. Able to engage enemy vehicles at more than 2,500 meters, its frontal armor could survive direct armor-piercing rounds fired from other Abrams tanks, while its depleted uranium and British-designed composite ceramic Cobham armor covering the rest of the vehicle kept four-person crews safe from harm. In the 1990s and 2000s, General Dynamics began producing an upgraded version of the Abrams, the M1A2, a system which made full use of the latest technologies. The M1A2 added thermal night vision imaging capabilities, integrated digital displays with better maps and communications, inter-vehicle information systems, improved cooling, and an overhauled transmission. Starting last year, 2021, the US Army finally began retiring the M1A1 Abrams from service. While the M1A1 is set to become a relic of a bygone era, the US military anticipates keeping its successor, the M1A2, in the ranks until well past 2050. A remarkable testament to the resilience and modularity of the Abrams' main battle tank design. But wait, if upgraded M1A1 2 Abrams are forecasted to remain in service for at least three more decades, why announce the Abrams X? Well, as the popular song goes, the times, they are a-changing. With the pace of technological change now moving faster than ever, militaries are beginning to unveil the next generation of smart tanks, ones that shoot, move, and communicate on a different plane than their predecessors. The Abrams X is still firmly riding the future war hype train, so we shouldn't get too carried away envisioning its potential role in the American Army of the future. The demonstrator version that debuted on the show floor last October looks like it will capitalize on cutting-edge computer processing, AI, and drone integration technologies, but it will still have to undergo plenty of tests before it's approved for manufacture. 
Before the Abrams X enters the battlefield, we'll continue to see the current production version of the Abrams tank, the M1A2 System Enhancement Package SEP version 3, and its successor currently in development, the M1A2 SEP version 4, for decades to come. So, when it finally does enter service, where might the Abrams X diverge from its predecessors? Bristling with a full suite of fancy electronic systems, the Abrams X addresses the two biggest complaints leveled at the M1A2, its weight and power. The current Abrams variation weighs in at a whopping 73.6 tons, a number that started at around 60 tons in the first Abrams variant but grew more cumbersome with each successive upgrade. Because of its weight, the Abrams devours an astonishing amount of fuel, 10 gallons just to start the engine, close to 2 gallons per mile, and up to 10 gallons per mile when idling. When you factor in how difficult it is to transport heavy vehicles around the globe and resupply them with that much fuel, shrinking the Abrams' logistical footprint seems like a no-brainer. Carving off the excessive weight, the Abrams X comes in at 60 tons, a feat achieved by moving the crew out of the main turret forward in the tank's hull, adding an autoloader for the main gun, and removing the turret's heavy armor. Some tankies might see the loss of a crew member as a possible weakness in the Abrams X. Sure, the autoloader is nice, but having an extra crew member on board can be a blessing, not a curse. Yes, there's less space, but the extra crew members can help operate secondary and tertiary weapon systems, help repair broken parts, fly drones, deploy countermeasures, or, the far more useful benefit, get chow for the others. Just in case the Abrams X autoloader systems do somehow break down, it's nice to have redundancy. On the subject of the autoloader, we know what you're probably thinking. What about all those Russian T-72s and T-80s in Ukraine whose autoloader turrets give NASA spaceships a run for their money? Don't they just get blown into orbit when they're hit by anti-tank missiles? Won't the Abrams X run into similar problems? It's a fair question. General Dynamics claims that it won't. Keeping the Abrams' original ammo storage design, one that relies on a sealed ammunition compartment behind the main turret with blast doors that open only momentarily when loading around, it will avoid the pitfalls of the Russian autoloader variants, which stores their ammo cyclically underneath the turret. With its lighter footprint, the Abrams X draws more from its power plant by replacing the original Abrams turbine engine with a diesel hybrid electric system. Operating in parallel with an advanced Cummings diesel engine, the main power source, a high-powered electric generator provides up to 50% fuel savings over the long run, enabling crews to engage quiet mode on stationary operations without starting the main engine. These batteries also provide a helpful option for exporting power to adjacent units. Apart from these improvements where the Abrams X shines in its upgradability, the Abrams X is fully modular, making use of the Catalyst Next Generation Electronic Architecture NGEA, that relies heavily on AI for target identification and acquisition, land navigation and path planning, and next generation situational awareness. The three-man crew is surrounded by a digital interface that offers far more visibility than its predecessors. Their vision gets amplified as crews control adjacent UAVs, robotic ground vehicles, and switchblade drones from the comfort of their bucket seat recliners. The NGEA is fully upgradable as new systems are developed, giving Abrams X space to grow into new roles as battlefield technology evolves. The Abrams X boasts even more lethality than current Abrams models. Even though it retains its original 1200mm main gun, it replaces the traditional 50 caliber turret-mounted exterior machine gun with a fully remote 30mm chain gun. In effect, this transforms the Abrams' secondary weapon from an anti-personnel, human-fired machine gun into essentially an M1 Bradley in miniature, one capable of engaging soft and lightly armored targets using programmable airburst munitions. This, General Dynamics claim, will serve as a better response to anti-tank teams, while its trophy radar-guided active protective system APS, basically a robotic shotgun, can shoot down incoming missiles and drones. This all sounds pretty amazing and cutting edge, right? However, while the Abrams X certainly improves many of the drawbacks associated with the M1A1 and A2 versions, it may not be as innovative as it seems. In 2015, the Russian armed forces revealed the T-14 Armata, a highly secretive next-generation main battle tank based on the Armata Universal Combat Platform. The Universal Armata design was originally intended to serve as a starting point for the next generation of Russian heavy infantry fighting vehicles, IFVs, and armored personnel carriers, AFVs. The T-14 tank iteration is capable in its own right. Coming in at a spry 55 tons, it is slightly bigger but also lighter than the M1 Abrams. Powered by a 1,500-horsepower, 12-speed automatic diesel engine, it's slightly faster than the Abrams. Costing $4 to $5 million per unit, it's also cheaper to produce, slightly more maneuverable, and claims to have an operational range of 310 miles. 
If anything, the T-14 may well prove to be a trendsetter. It was, after all, the world's first production tank with an unmanned turret, a design feature that Abrams X will replicate. It possesses a larger 125mm smoothbore cannon, an autoloader, reactive armor, and an active protective system APS similar to the one on the Abrams X. Like the Abrams X, the Armata's three-man crew store their rounds in a sealed turret compartment separate from the cockpit. Likewise, the power plant autoloader and cockpits are sealed against nuclear, biological, and fire threats. The T-14 also has a merged engine transmission unit that can be swapped in 30 minutes in the field, and future variants may be equipped with a massive 152mm gun, which can fire guided missiles capable of shattering armor twice as thick as the Abrams. When it was first announced, the T-14 set the Western world into a frenzy. Could the existing M1A2 Abrams variants hold its weight against the latest Russian main battle tank? On paper, at least, it was close. They had similar armament, top speeds, and armor. With its isolated crew compartment, the T-14 may have been able to better protect its operators. It had marginally better range, muzzle energy, fuel efficiency, and maintenance potential. But the robust 40-year-old Abrams design with its modern upgrades would almost certainly hold its own in a firefight, which did not bode well for Russia, since by the time they announced the T-14, there were already 10,000 operable Abrams produced and in use around the world. As it turned out, there wasn't much to worry about. Despite plans to acquire 2,300 T-14 tanks by 2025, there are still virtually no Armatas in use throughout the Russian armed forces. As the Armata program was beset by production issues, financial problems, and trial delays, its initial acquisition was scaled back to just 100 experimental vehicles, a number that Russia has fallen well short of reaching. Today, it's unknown just how many Armata tanks are either in production or being tested by the Russian armed forces, with some estimates claiming a mere 20 pre-production units were actually delivered. Can this tank actually be mass-produced, as the Abrams has been? The jury is still out. There are many other unknowns surrounding the project, whether it actually has participated in war games or live fire events, whether the 50-ton tank could actually achieve the same level of survivability as the sturdier Abrams, or whether its autoloader system is as reliable as claimed. With the Abrams X incorporating and surpassing many of the design features introduced by the Armata, it would certainly be favored in a one-on-one -on -one duel. The fact that the existing Abrams is a time-tested, battle-proven main battle tank, a formidable base platform that will be continually improved upon and upgraded through 2050 is a huge mark in its favor. Already capable of matching up against the T-14 Armata, the fact remains that the price of upgrading existing and already manufactured M1A2s with the next generation technology is far cheaper than producing a new T-14, something Russia can't even dream of as the economic and military consequences of its ill-planned invasion of Ukraine mount. So, could the Abrams X destroy the Russian T-14 Armata? In the end, the accuracy of rangefinders, high-fidelity sensors, and computer targeting would most likely determine the outcome of this tank duel. As one commentator noted, small differences in lethality will likely matter less if one tank is able to see the other, while the other cannot detect at similar ranges. The tank that can find, target, and hit the other one from longer range is likely to prevail in any kind of war engagement. The true difference maker, however, in a fight between the Abrams X and the T-14 Armata would likely not be the tank's technology, armament, or munitions, but in the quality of the crew. This is where the Abrams X, or any modern Abrams model for that matter, would truly shine. Operated by competent, well-trained crews with effective NCOs, something the Russians no longer have, tanks are only as good as the humans inside of them. With a strong emphasis on combined and joint operations, American tank crews would almost certainly benefit from air superiority, better intelligence, and integration with remote assets, not to mention far greater interoperability with their global allies and partners. These all matter on the modern battlefield and will continue to matter in the future. Where these factors fail, discipline, cohesion, and training will take care of the rest. In a notable point-blank tank skirmish during the invasion of Iraq, American tank crews in M1 Abrams tanks destroyed seven Iraqi T-72s at a distance of less than 50 yards. Having never fired live ammunition in their training due to the economic sanctions in effect, something the Russian Mobix might relate to today, the Iraqis did not even register a single hit on their American counterparts. Yes, training, drill, and cohesion matter a great deal indeed. Until both next-generation tanks actually enter the production line, something that for Russia may not happen at all, as recent reports indicate it has halted its 20 trillion ruble program altogether, one-on-one -on -one showdowns between the Abrams X and the T-14 Armata will likely remain confined to our imagination. But if you had to pick one, who would you go with? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.